Do you know, you know one of the things that sparked the Russiagate investigation was, uh, I could be wrong about this, but it was Michael Flynn. I think he was talking to Sally Yates, and he said he didn't think Russia was our greatest adversary. He thought China was. And that alarm bells. Oh, no. Oh, no, no someone's bad-mouthing China. We, we, we must stop them. Because everyone knows it's actually Russia. Yeah. Biden has talked about how he views Russia as the bigger threat. We have this, this, the biggest hack, I guess, in, in history. And immediately they knew it was Russia. They're calling it a digital Pearl Harbor. This is what the media is saying. The cyber equivalent of Pearl Harbor just happened. That's what they're saying. And it was Russia who did it. Now, we've seen no evidence. We've seen nothing to indicate we've actually been hacked other than they told us that's what happened. And the many people who work or who held stock at SolarWinds, the company that was hacked, sold off a large portion of that stock just before the news broke. So perhaps something happened. But now what? We're going to be marching into a war with Russia? Over what? Natural gas? I don't know. Meanwhile, the actual threat is China, and it's, and it's seemingly going to be ignored by this incoming ad administration. I think the Trump administration is trying to do, especially the State Department, uh, is trying to do as much as they can. Like, that would be hard for the Biden administration to reverse. Um, one of the things about the AI thing that Luke was talking about is uh, after the Trump administration started banning uh, Chinese tech companies from getting U.S. technology, like semiconductor technology, the the chip technology. That hurt. It actually crippled Huawei and ZTE and a lot of these uh, companies. SMIC is one of the ones that they're putting on the Commerce Department blacklist today. Uh, and that's China's biggest chip manufacturer. But they don't have the technology. Like, they cannot make the chips as advanced as the U.S. chips are. So it actually has slowed them down a lot in terms of being able to develop these like supercomputers and things like that. But on the other hand, we had um, US companies who were before this completely like bringing their technology to these Chinese companies. Like a few US companies got in trouble for um, providing technology to, uh, that was powering this huge Chinese supercomputer center that was basically running 24 seven surveillance in Xinjiang. Well, part of the problem is because uh, they think they're doing business with civilian, you know, private companies in China. But China has a specific civil military fusion, they call it, where basically every company, private or whatever, is has to help the Chinese Communist Party. So yeah. we, there is no separation between the party hmm. and uh, private individuals, private companies. Um, I, I think the distinctions between authoritarianism is... is mostly pointless when we say communist or fascist or Nazi or whatever. The real problem is always authoritarian because they function in, so, in, in, in much the same way. Hmm. We get into arguments over, but was their economic system based upon, you know, no, 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 that, that's pointless. The party tells the industries what to do. The party tells the people what to do. It's, it's authoritarianism. Power. Exactly. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> the real end risk is not, is not necessarily that the Chinese Communist Party is going to completely take over the world or the United States. As Luke was saying, the Communist Party is actually horribly corrupt. It's built on a very shaky foundation. I think what the biggest risk is if we don't stand up now and get more in bed with the Chinese Communist Party. When it collapses, we'll be so tied to that that it will just have a ripple effect. We saw what happened with uh, the coronavirus, how there was, there was just things we couldn't get. Vitamin C. Things. Yeah. And, and uh, like Italy, one of the first countries to get it really badly outside China, has mm -hmm. a lot of ties to China. Uh, economic ties economic, and also yeah. factories with made in Italy labels that are specifically done through. She went there. I wow. went to some of those uh, factories yeah. in a city called Prado, which yeah. is largely Chinese now, and there are sweatshops in the back alleys. Exactly. Yeah. So, so the Chinese are literally importing slave factories to Italy so they can have <laughs> made in Italy products wow. stamped wow. legally. Yeah, I mean, and, and this is one of the reasons why they said that the coronavirus spread so vastly and so fast in Italy. It was because of this program of slave workers going back and forth. And Italy wow. was the first Western country to get involved in the yeah. Belt and Road Initiative, and so they were the government was very reluctant to oh, criticize. Yeah. We didn't even talk about Belt and Road, which is oh, a no. huge That's way a huge that they're trying, they're kind of taking over too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is also another example of what uh, Di Dongsheng was saying. Even this Belt and Road Initiative, which is roughly an infrastructure investment around the world, it still operates in U.S. dollars. Interesting. So that's a lot of power the United States still has. But if everything is either UN or whatever digital currency the Chinese Communist Party is trying to run out with, that then we're going to lose that power. Yeah. And then the U.S. dollar is going to start losing uh, a lot of value. And then we start seeing a ripple effect where other countries start walking away from it. 
Then we get hyperinflation as the U.S. struggles to pay off its debts by printing money in quantitative easing type, type programs. And then we start shuffling dollar bills into the gutter, figuratively yeah. like we saw in Weimar, Germany. And then the people who bought uh, cryptocurrency and other hard goods will be safe to a certain degree. Are you saying buy Bitcoin? Not necessarily. I think people are obsessed with it uh, because, you know, uh, it's, it's useful, it's valuable, and it's scarce and can only become more scarce. But I, I always tell people, if you think that we're coming to a point of hyperinflation where you're not gonna be able to buy anything, what makes you think anyone's gonna want your Bitcoin? If I'm starving and, and dehydrated, I'm gonna be like, get away from me and I'm gonna run towards the guy who's got a bottle of water. So I always tell people, invest in things. Here, here's, here's what I was telling, uh, I was telling Ian earlier, this, earlier the day. Think about the most common thing you use throughout the day and most people use that is the hardest to produce. Whatever that might be, I'm not entirely sure. Perhaps antiseptics. That's kind of what we were thinking of. Smooth maybe. jazz. Smooth jazz. That's right. You know, when the apocalypse <laughs> happens, there's going to be a hot demand hot for that market. smooth jazz. Clean mm. drinking water. Perhaps. And but, but, but you know, uh, I think what is hard to produce, extremely important and used on a day-to-day basis, antiseptics. That's the first thing I thought of. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if anybody at the top of their head could tell you how to make alcohol. Yeah, anything chemical. Like actual, like pure ethanol to clean wounds, clean mm. your hands and... And uh, you could you could stub your toe out in the woods and lose your foot, lose your leg, or die from well, this goes back shock. to what we were talking about earlier, where people need to start investing in their communities. Yeah, the more sufficient, self sufficient a community is, uh, that will be that's huge. Yep, and we won't be as dependent on a hostile foreign regime. Yeah, that will use the power specifically to like. Uh, today, the news came out that Turkey is taking twenty million doses of vaccines from China, and they also, in the same, uh, like the Chinese state were meeting in the same announcement, said that Turkey also said that they, you know, approve of China's counter like counter terrorism efforts, and that shouldn't be politicized. And Turkey will not allow anybody within its borders to, ta- like, you know, upset Chinese sovereignty. And what that means is they're going after the Uyghurs because Turkey has the largest population of Uyghur exiles. In Uyghurs the world. are a Turkic. Wow. So, so yeah. uh, I, I heard a lot that we get our medication, our, our medications are made in China. Mm-hmm. Is, is that true? Like the, the Chinese will manufacture, say, amoxicillin tablets. Do we still use amoxicillin? Yeah. No. For tetracycline. A, Do they make the tetracycline? For a lot of the cheaper ones, yes. Um, for expensive pharmaceuticals or like more complicated pharmaceuticals, we actually mostly manufacture them in the U.S. But a lot of the cheaper, like generic, like what you're talking about, antibiotics right. that come from China, or a lot of times the raw ingredients from the, for those come from China. If, uh, so uh, I think we still use tetracycline, right? That's a, a common antibiotic. I think so. Uh, for something, let's, 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 let's talk about like a generic medication that's very common. When it's manufactured in China and brought here, does it go through a rigor, rigorous molecular analysis to make sure what's in that is actually what they claim it is? Well, if there was a situation where they were actually exporting like trash that was actually killing Americans, they, they, that would be a huge issue. But you look at the strategy of China, it's not to come in marching with weapons and shooting people down, it's to subvert. So if they could put something that, let, let's say there's an ingredient they could add in a very mic, a small dose, let's say we're producing these genetics that are used, you know, maybe by you know, 100,000 people per day across the United, or 100,000 people per week across the United States. We had an, an ingredient at a, a ratio of 0.5%, which will create a mortality in the U.S. of 0.1%. Per you know you, you, you see what I'm saying? I, I mean, it's, it's an it's they, a tr- attrition game. They've talked about unrestricted warfare, which is basically war by other means. You don't use troops. Uh, everything is kind of on the table. This was this is what they were talking about. Drug warfare is on the if, table. If drug I, warfare if, is right, on the right. table. Uh, so so yeah. a lot of the drugs in the U.S. are made in China and shipped here, like hard illicit drugs that that kill people. Fentanyl. Where is the, over the fentanyl, the opioid? I think yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. huge thing. And you know they have total government surveillance, but they somehow don't know when factories are sending fentanyl right. to the U.S. Yeah. Or technically through to Mexico, which then so brings it to the U.S. They, you know, there's connections to the Mexican I, I, cartels. I wonder if, uh, you know, if it's something that I can think of at the top of my head, certainly the Chinese Communist Party has had meetings where they're like, can we add something at a very small dose that would go unnoticed, these medications that would create a mortality rate negligible, but or are unnoticeable, but not, unnegli- but not negligible to, to us? I think that would be hard for them to do. I wouldn't say that they wouldn't try to do something like that, but um, the danger is in that being discovered and the backlash being so... Mm-hmm. Because like you look at what they've done with the... They tried this whole mask diplomacy thing a few months ago where they were like, oh, we are going to send masks like uh, you know KN95s for the coronavirus to all these different countries around the world. 
and they were uh, and tech and tests and they were you know and there was a huge backlash so that was bad for them to have yeah. like the quality thing so if it's like if it if it's like oh my gosh drugs from china aren't are faulty then th- that would be worse for them but what if they nobody have- noticed well, I think the point Shelley is making is that that's still a risk of being right. exposed versus like all the other ways that they are very successful at subverting the United States, like just just buy off Wall Street or buy off the incoming president, you know, you know, they start <laughs> <laughs> or go after his crackhead son. Yeah, I mean, that's that like they'll do. They definitely target family members of politicians. They definitely target they they'll target like small time mayors or, you know, state senators. Or yeah, we just heard that no recently. one is small yeah, enough. Their, yeah, no one yeah, like they, no. They, they, they'll try anything. Even yeah. even even the most insignificant politician you could think of could be sleeping with a Chinese spy, like somebody who has no merit or value to the political system. Maybe a congressman from California. A and, dopey and, looking and one with blonde hair. Yeah. yeah. Who farted on camera once. Yeah. <laughs> you get, you hey, know. even a great man like Rudy Giuliani farted on camera. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, that's yeah, he true. Did. Yeah. And my, oh man, do you see when he blew his nose? And then wiped his face. Swalwell with or no. Giuliani? Giuliani. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, no. the congressman we're talking about was Swalwell, who's, who was banging the Chinese spy. And uh, yeah. Allegedly. Well, allegedly. actually, I don't even know if that's allegedly. That, Anymore. That's well, that sure. wasn't in the Axios article. I think that oh, yeah, was like a later... Later accusation. He's yeah. not denying it, which no, is that's important true. to understand here. But one thing that you brought up that I think is really worth considering is China's relationship with other countries. You specifically brought up Turkey, but I really wanted to talk about Russia because there's many official and unofficial alliances that they have with Russia, which again, now Biden is kind of pointing as the main geopolitical foe to the United States. But we also have to understand geopolitically on the world stage, Russia and China have always been together especially when it comes to significant moves against the U.S. dollar, and especially when it comes to countering American foreign policy, like with Iran, Syria, Iraq. They get involved, and they work together against U.S. interests together. So uh, how do you see this kind of working out if the United States pushes towards a bigger conflict with Russia? How do you see China being involved in that? Well, uh, I think a, a year or two ago, Xi Jinping actually gave Putin a friendship medal you can look it up. It's very nice. Aww. Was it's, it like a heart? And it was like half the heart? It and was then like he had this half? It was big glorious, gold, yeah. like, like all these medals all the way down. Wow. It was the, insane. They, they do wow. these weird things where like she will go to Russia and have like caviar or Putin will come to China and they'll like have Putin make a dumpling. And they, um, they last time Xi Jinping went to Russia, they had like Xi Jinping's favorite ice cream. Remember this? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That, that like the well, last time he had come to Russia, he'd like said this ice cream is great. So they had like buckets of this ice Which cream. Which is for why him. Trump gave Xi Jinping the best chocolate cake ever. Oh, Remember that when he went to Mar a Lago, was the best uh, cake. Uh-huh. Oh okay. But I think yeah. in terms of China and Russia, they will always stand together against the U.S. Even if they Just do like, kind of hate each other. They do kind of hate each other. The, you know that that's the whole Nixon thing where he was like, yeah. well, they've split. So, um, but like. They will always stand, like in the UN, in any international body, they will unite to stand against mm-hmm. the US. But they're also yeah. doing a sharing of technology and sharing of uh, their military with specific drills that they conduct together as they're you know, working in cohesion many times as well, which I think is something significant that we should really also look out for as well. I mean, but the Chinese military is also working with the Canadian military. So. Yes, they are. Yes. Wow. Just, Justin Trudeau, yeah. the prime minister who said that he worshipped uh, and and admired the Chinese government for their efficiency to be able to turn the economy on the dime is now officially yeah, training Chinese soldiers in well, Canada right yeah. now. Well, that actually began in 2013 under the Conservative Party. Wow. Uh, what was the guy named? Harper? Stephen Harper, Harper. yeah. yeah. It, does, it doesn't matter. The, these political parties, I don't know much about Canada, but I'll tell you, the mm-hmm. Republicans and the Democrats... Oh, yeah, this was a failing of Republicans and Democrats. Bush yep. messed it up. Clinton really messed it up. Bush... Part two messed it up. Obama messed it up, and so and I don't. Trump kind of went nuts Trump. on it. Well, I don't. I don't know if Trump did good or or did well. If I'm being see, proper but, but hold on. You see, China uh-huh. was like, we can't tell what this guy's doing. He's crazy. And meanwhile, Trump was like going like, ah, like moving in random directions. And he's like, if they can't tell what I'm doing, they can't uh-huh. have a cohesive strategy against me. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if Trump did well or if it's just in comparison to everything that came before. It's like, wow, amazing. <laughs> yeah, like when you're like, right, oh, right. my God, the yeah. U.S. State Department is actually talking about human rights abuses in China. Should that be shocking? Like, should that yeah, really be yeah. like, wow, I can't believe they're actually doing something well, about it. I mean, the president we, we of the stormed United- beaches 
you know, before. The president of the United States can meet with Kim Jong-un, the insane dictator of North Korea, but he can't meet with the president of Taiwan. Yeah. That's that's geopolitics right now. Yep. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there, thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.